Hello everyone, welcome to episode 8 of Off the Charts. I'm your host, Dan. Uh, I know I promised you guys an episode of uh, my top overrated bands, but uh, I changed my mind, so sue me. I'm just not really ready to do that episode yet, I need to... more investigation, I guess. But anyway, um, I will be doing... the episode for today will be... The good and bad of when hair metal went grunge. Now, I'm going to be trying something new here to see if it works. I don't have all the albums because most of these are... Some are good. Some are bad albums. Some I, I just don't own anymore. So I'm going to be trying some little uh, inserting JPEGs like this guy right here to see if it works. Anyway, we'll... Uh, if you see the uh, final product and there's pictures, I guess it did work. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing uh, an episode on when hair metal went grunge. Uh, before I do that, I do want to thank one of our viewers here, Jason, who actually, I was like, wow, I was pretty honored when I heard about this, where he uh, listened to my uh, top 20, uh, top 2021 um episode and made himself a playlist on Spotify regarding my choices and a few others of his. So uh, thank you, Jason. That, that actually uh, made me feel very good. So uh, anyway, keep watching, guys. So here's... Um, this is not really any particular order here, but I'm just going to mention and I'm just going to tell you if, if this was a good move or a bad move or not really a good move or a bad move. They're all bad moves, to be honest there. Um, but some I liked, some I don't liked. So we'll uh, see for that there. So I'll start off with, uh, I think, the biggest culprit here, anyway, when I, when I heard, first heard this. Uh, first of all, it was a bad time for music for myself. Like I said, I still stick to my guns. The 90s sucked. Deal with it, okay? The 90s fucking sucked. Okay? So if anybody knows me here... I loved, and I use the word loved, past tense, The Bullet Boys. The first two albums are great, like classic uh, hard rock, hair metal, whatever you want to call it there. And then they came out with Zaza, which I actually liked also. The first three, actually. So I'm like, oh, wow, I'm looking forward to this new Bullet Boys. And then they come out with this, look at this album cover here. Acid Monkey. I mean, oh, I first, I mean, the song Toy is passable, but the rest is like, oh my God, was this recorded on a $10 budget? It sounds such like shit, okay? Bad album, bad songs, the singers mixed way down, and it's like, I was like, nah, I don't like that. Uh, anyway, Bullet Boy's Acid Monkey gets a thumbs down from me for that one. I, I would like to meet the guy or girl who actually likes that album. Let me know. Um, next up will be... I actually have a prop for this one here. Would be this one here. Anybody remember the Motley Crue album with uh, John Karabi? Uh, quite a change, first of all. Not just a singer, but voice and the second guitar and all that. But you know what? I like this album a lot. It, a lot uh, more than uh, Generation Swine, New Tattoo... Uh, forget what else there, but I actually like this album a lot here. This has got some uh, great stuff on it. So, of course, it flopped. Like, especially not as bad as the Acid Monkey <laughs> Bullet Boys did, but this flopped. Uh, see, when I got my uh, John Karabi signature when I saw him at uh, uh, live here at Obsession, I think. But anyway, I would say uh, this is a good album here. Very underrated. I think it just flopped because nobody wanted this singer. They wanted Vince Neil back. So, anyway, this gets a thumbs up for me here. I like this album a lot. I still listen to this one. Next up, I don't even think you guys even know if this exists or not. But anybody remember Lee Aaron from uh, Canada? You remember when she did this album after her uh, solo career kind of stopped or fizzled for a little while here? 
I bought this because I like Learen a lot. I bought this. I probably listened to this once, maybe twice. I could even tell you what this was such shit. I'm sorry, this is bad. Lear and you're better than this. I love your solo albums, but this was not any good. I played this once or twice. I don't even remember if what songs. I couldn't even sing you a song or name you. A, well, I can name you songs as I'm reading it now. But uh, no, I I, I I I can't remember anything. So this gets a big thumbs down from me for this one here. If you want to listen to Lear and listen to her solo stuff, the old stuff and the new stuff. That's actually still very good. Not this. Next up, I will, and you, you noticed, you noticed, I, I, I'm going to put this here first, Dokken, Shadow Life. Now, again, this album sounds terrible. It's like they all, I don't understand why these, I understand why business-wise, but artistically, why did these guys just go and do this type of music? Because they all come back and did this, like when they saw that their grunge thing flopped, they all come back to do the same type of music that we all know and love. So this one, again, sounds like shit. The cover is terrible, too. Not as bad as Acid Monkey, but uh, not the same logo. I mean, I did listen to this a few times there. I could name you a few songs there, but a lot of them I don't remember. But uh, Puppet on a String, I think. Cra cracks in the Ground, I think. I think was my favorite of the album. But see uh, uh, how I'm not sure? So anyway, this one also gets a big thumbs down. Some people, I've heard people on the, the internet liking this album. I don't know why. But uh, sure enough, the album right after was True Doc in the, and I think was in, still in the, in the 90s, maybe. I don't, I don't even know what year this was here, 1997. Well, anyway. This is bad. Sounds bad. The songs are not that great either. So, whatever. Oh, that's uh, my alarm for another shot of Grand Marnier. Cheers, everybody. Next up. Anybody remember Dangerous Toys? I actually like this. This is probably my favorite of all the, um, the grunge albums by hair metal bands i guess there this is more like grunge meets industrial i guess there uh the, the album is genius first of all the cover is genius it's like prince and the album is called um the artist formerly known as dangerous toys i thought this was such a great move here but anyway i like this album a lot man like share the kill it's written in cursive yes i know how to read cursive but it's just so small here the same the numb uh, there was one near the end to live the lie love that one too anyway and it's probably not i mean they, they only have four albums there but it's not the one that i listen to the least let me put it that way so this one actually gets a thumbs up from uh, myself here um it's not a desperate grunge move it's more like a an evolution in a in sound look at it not really an evolution but uh Anyway, I like this album a lot, so give it a shout. The last two I'm going to mention, I don't own them. So, again, we'll uh, see if this works. So, I'm going to go with uh, Warrant, which had Ultraphobic and Belly to Belly. Ultraphobic, oh, Ultraphobic was passable. Belly to Belly, though? Wow. Did I sell that one fast? And it's, and I think if you look at the JPEG there, it's uh, Belly to Belly Volume 1. Oh, it flopped so bad, there never was a, a Volume 2. Nobody wanted a Volume 2. Sorry, guys. And of course, same thing again. They disband or whatever, temporarily, come back and do the stuff that, you know, Warrant fans are used to by Warrant, which is hair metal. No modern hair metal, obviously there, but um, anyway, it's if if you've never heard of this album, don't worry about it. You're not missing much. Um, 
Last one here would be, again, I don't own this copy, so I'll put uh, the picture right here, which is uh, Dawn by Danger Danger. I actually like that, that album. Uh, the song Helicopter was so good. Mind you, it's like, instrument-wise, it's a little... Because I think the bass player decided to become a guitarist or the guitarist went on drums, something like that. I forget what the whole thing was there. But uh, anyway, it made still for a fairly decent album. I'm not going to give it a complete thumbs up. I'll probably go it like this here. Because again, like any, like everybody else, they did come back, not exactly to what their style is there. I don't love Danger Danger. I don't... No, I don't like them that much. But that one actually was actually a fairly decent album. I actually liked it. Uh, which had a different singer too with Paul Lane which I saw open for Joe Satriani. Remember Doriana, that song? Yeah, that guy. Anyway, so a short episode for today there. So, um, again, thanks for watching. First of all, cheers. My next episode will be my top Canadian bands. Now, I said a lot of people have been asking me to do something for Canada and all that, since I am Canadian. And... Um, just to save my voice. Oh, man, I love this stuff. Anyway, yeah, my next episode will be uh, my top Canadian bands. And yes, I will do that overrated uh, episode. It's just not right now there. I'm just not really ready there to really bitch about these guys there. <laughs> I feel like I've been bitching about all these uh, hair metal bands here uh, today. But like I said, some I like. Most of them I don't like. Stick with what you know, guys. Okay, I know you guys wanted to go grunge because that's where everybody was going, but just because it worked with uh, Nirvana doesn't mean it's going to work for you too. And uh, anyway, grunge. Uh -uh. No, no thanks. So anyway, thank you. Cheers. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I've had a little uh, notch in the subscribers this week here, so uh, thank you to everyone who has subscribed, and we'll see you next episode. Cheers.